things. Back on April 23rd, Orthodox Moore put out another video relevant to the markings on the pews at uh, First African Baptist Church in Savannah, Georgia. And uh, like his previous videos on the topic, this one was quite interesting. I, I definitely recommend his video for viewers who are interested in this topic, and I'll share a link in the video description. Now, I wanted to offer some brief thoughts on the portion of the video which covered Orthodox Moore's correspondence with uh, Professor Brian Kirshen at uh, Binghamton University in New York. So jumping right into this, I'm going to pick up at about the 439 mark, the 4 minute 39 second mark, and play slightly over 4 minutes. Uh, here we go. Um, I emailed Dr. Brian Kirshen uh, from Binghamton University in New York um, uh, to see what he thought about the matter. Um, what I did was I, I, I picked a few different people to email um, and I sent them uh, and you'll see here because I'm going to show uh, that I, I sent them uh, pictures of the pews and then highlighted pictures of what would be so the trail. And then also I picked some people and sent them uh, uh, pictures of the pews and highlighted pictures of, of what uh, has been speculated to be uh, Arabic, etc. So in doing so, the first one I sent out was to, again, uh, Dr. Brian Kirshen, PhD. Uh, his background uh, is that Brian Kirshen holds a joint title in the Department of Romance Languages and the Linguistic Pro Linguistics Program. He is affiliated, and this is at Binghamton University. He is affiliated uh, a faculty uh, of the Translation Research and Instruction Program and the Department of Judaic Studies. Dr. Kirshen is a sociolinguistic specializing in the Spanish language. He has published on Judeo-Spanish, Ladino, and the use of Spanish in the United States. His education um, is that he has a PhD from the University of California, Los Angeles, etc. Um, you can see all the rest of that, but I want to get into his, his research interest and whatnot because I thought this was interesting. Um, again, he is a socio linguist. linguist. Um, he deals with that, uh, social linguistics, um, uh, contact linguistics, language variation, documentary linguistics, language ideologies, Sephardic stud studies, and, and Al Hamiado texts. Um, and I found that to be intriguing and ex extremely interesting because not only is he um, does he have a background in Ladino, but he has an, a background in, in Al Hamiado text. And for those who don't know, those are texts um, of Romance languages, etc., written in uh, Arabic script. And this also includes Ladino. So you have uh, Solatreo, which is the cursive Hebrew. And El Hamiado, which is um, the Romance languages, including Ladino, um, written in Arabic script. Um, so going further, I sent him this email. Shalom, Dr. Kirshen. My name is Tyvon Sueno. My mother descends from a pocket of Sephardic Jews recently found in New Mexico and Southern Colorado. Since finding out about our heritage, we have done a lot of study concerning our, our history, language, and culture. Recently in that research, some friends and acquaintances made me aware of a set of potential carvings made on, on some wooden pews that may be in the Solitario script. From what I understand, the building uh, was historically located in an area that had a population of Sephardic Jews in the late 1700s and early 1800s. I have attached two photos, one uh, which is a picture of the wood panel on the side of the pew. The second is a photo with highlighted portions of the panel that are believed to contain Solitario. Uh, in your opinion, is there any solar trail on this panel? And if so, can you make it out? Thank you for your time and any clarity you are able to provide. Um, so as you can see, I put uh, I gave him a blank pic a picture of the just the pews with, with no with no uh, highlights on them. And then I gave a picture of uh, uh, the highlighted portion that that Pastor Kelly put together. Um, and so this was the response that I got from Dr. Kershaw. His response was, hi, Tavon, thanks for your email. I've received other inquiries about this same set of pews. The symbols prior to and after the word in yellow appear more similar to the Arabic alphabet than to the Hebrew-based cursive variety, Solatreo. Um, and that's important to note because he, he's able to distinguish the two being familiar with Ladino and El Hamiado. Um, based on the portion outlined in yellow, if I were to try and make something out of it, uh, it would be the name Ario. The letters do not exactly conform to Solatreo, and the historical context certainly leaves important room for discussion and consideration as well. Best Brian, Brian Kirshen, Assistant Professor of Spanish, Linguistics Director of Undergraduate Studies Department uh, 
uh, Romance Languages and Literature, uh, uh, Binghamton University. Um, so I thought that was extremely, extremely interesting. Okay, now as a preliminary note, uh, this video is not intended as a response to either Orthodox Moore or Professor Kirshen. Uh, in other words, what I'm saying is I'm not trying to offer any sort of rebuttal to what either gentleman had said. Rather, I wanted to offer some quick thoughts discussing that portion and uh, attempt to build upon what we saw there, as I think this provides an opportunity to explore how one set of markings on a pew can have an impact on how we interpret other markings which appear nearby, you know, on the same pew. Uh, now, in these ongoing discussions on the pews, some have mentioned the context uh, of the marking, such as the historical context. But here I'd like to explore the idea of context in a different sense, the idea that one set of markings on a pew might provide a sort of immediate context for another set of markings on the same pew. So to explain what I mean, consider a, a quick thought experiment. Suppose we have a pew. Now, suppose that pew has these markings. That looks like the numbers 212, but it also looks like the Hebrew cursive characters Dalet Wa Dalet, which can spell the name David or the word Dod, which uh, means beloved or uncle. So that raises a question, which is it? You know, are these uh, numbers, are these European uh, adaptations of the Arabic numerals or are these Hebrew cursive characters? Uh, the markings seem open to multiple interpretations. Well, this is where other markings on the same pew might have the potential to provide more context. So, for example, suppose the markings beside that portion which we were originally looking at looked like this. Now, if that were the case, that would definitely look like Hebrew. It looks like it reads Melech David, King David in cursive Hebrew. The markings on the right would lead us to conclude that what we were initially looking at was indeed the string of Hebrew characters, Dalet wa Dalet. Uh, so too, to offer another example in this regard, suppose the markings looked instead like this. That would seem to clearly be cursive Hebrew, reading Zedodi Wezerai. This is my beloved and this is my friend, which is a line right out of uh, Song of Songs 516. So again, in this context, the other markings would lead us to believe the markings we were originally looking at were indeed the Hebrew characters Dalet wa Dalet, in this case preceded by some Hebrew characters and also uh, succeeded by some Hebrew characters as well, i.e. there's Hebrew characters coming both before and after. Uh, however, suppose instead that a different set of markings appeared and it looked like this. That looks like a phone number, specifically 212-777-3456, which, as I've mentioned in previous discussions, uh, back in the day was actually the New York number for movie phone. <laughs> uh, in this case, the context of the other markings would lead us to think that the markings we were originally looking at were indeed the numbers 212, you know, European adaptations of Arabic numerals. Uh, th now, the point of this thought experiment is that one set of markings on a pew can, pro can provide potential context for interpreting another set of markings on the same pew. In other words, how we interpret a set of markings on a pew can be impacted by what else appears on that pew, you know, what appears before it and after it. So, you with that example in mind, uh, I'd honestly be uncertain if one should uh, propose that maybe the portion on the right uh, are numbers, but the portion we were originally looking at are still Hebrew characters. Uh, in other words, if it were argued that one hand wrote Hebrew letters and a different hand wrote European adaptations of Arabic numerals, we might find that explanation curious in light of how easily this string of characters fits together. You know, uh, instead, it seems to me that, that perhaps the best explanation would be that they're all numbers. Now, as a disclaimer, I'm not saying that this, such a hypothetical argument is, is indicative of Professor Kirshen's argument. Instead, I have in mind uh, arguments proposed by others like Kelly Richardson, uh, who I'll be bringing up shortly. But, you know, with that thought experiment before us, we can now look at the actual pew in question. Now, those who have been following the discussion on the pews over the last few months may recall that Kelly Richardson had asked that we limit the part we examine, you know, on this particular pew, that we had limit the part we examined to just this portion here. Uh, 
Kelly Richardson had proposed that this isolated portion is Solitreo script, which reads Yisrael, i.e. Israel, curiously spelled with five yods and a Zion, but no Aleph. Uh, meanwhile, while Professor Kirshen did not provide a precise string of characters, uh, he didn't propose a, pre- a precise string of characters, you know, uh, if we read his email in light of the markings, uh, it seems that you know, what he was alluding to was perhaps something along the lines of Aleph Resh Yod Yod Lamed, a perhaps slightly irregular spelling of the name Ariel. Uh, now, note that the character Kelly Richardson identified as, as a Zion was indirectly suggested by Professor Kirshen as possibly resembling an Aleph, and perhaps that also speaks to the fact that these markings are open to multiple interpretations. Now, with that in mind, with the the possibility of multiple interpretations in mind, uh, as some know, aside from a solitreo interpretation of this pew, uh, there has also been an Arabic reading proposed for the same markings. Uh, Three different professors, those being uh, Joffrey Khan at Cambridge, uh, Samar Ali at the University of Michigan, and Mahan Mirza at Notre Dame, suggested independently of one another that it might be possible to interpret the pew as containing the Arabic phrase, Ilahin Nas, which is uh, a phrase found in the last chapter of the Quran. Uh, two of those professors suggested the possibility that the text being pre- that the text might be preceded by another instance of the word Anas. So, in other words, uh, three pro- three different professors proposed uh, Ilahin Nas, and two of them proposed more specifically Anas Ilahin Nas. However. If we were to limit our focus to just that isolated portion, to just the portion that uh, Kelly Richardson wanted us to look at, what would be left of the proposed Arabic reading would be the characters Alif Lam Ha, Alif Lam Nun Alif. Uh, But this brings us to an important question. What if we did not limit our examination of this pew to only that isolated portion? What if we looked at the markings which come immediately before and immediately after that portion? As was just noted, a couple others uh, with admittedly differing levels of confidence or hesitancy had suggested a more expanded view of the markings might be read as uh, anas, ilahin nas, humanity, the god of humanity, and in Arabic specifically. So with that in mind, recall that Professor Kirshen said that what came before and after the isolated portion looked like Arabic. So at this point, we might ask this question, If this were text from the last chapter of the Qur'an, what Arabic letter would come immediately before and immediately after that isolated portion? Well, in that Qur'anic text, the isolated portion happens to have a scene, an Arabic letter scene, both immediately before and immediately after it. Now, regarding those markings which Professor Kirshen said resemble Arabic, what precise Arabic characters do they resemble? I would propose that they both coincidentally resemble the character seen, precisely the character we would expect to see flanking the isolated portion if it was indeed the relevant Quranic text. Now, I honestly think that's quite the interesting coincidence, to say the least. Recall our thought experiment with the markings that could resemble Hebrew characters or European adaptations of Arabic numerals. Just as it would have been perhaps less than convincing to argue that one hand wrote Hebrew and a different hand wrote numbers, so too here, our best course of interpretation might not be to propose that one hand wrote solitreo and then immediately before and after another hand wrote something else that merely resembled Arabic characters. Now, as a disclaimer, I am not proposing that that was what Professor Kirshen uh, was proposing. However, some may recall that Kelly Richardson's reason for isolating that portion of the pew was that the markings that came before and after struck him as being made by other hands. However, I would propose that when the isolated portion is examined together with the markings that come before and after it, the case for Arabic seems stronger, as it seems to provide the best explanation for most of what appears on this particular pew. Now, I am fine with others remaining skeptical about that. I myself am skeptical that any language appears on this pew. I think it's worth keeping in mind how these markings are open to multiple interpretations, which may well speak to the vagueness of the markings or to the power of the human mind to find patterns which might not actually be present. But I would still say that if, if there is language on this particular pew, it seems to me that the strongest case may well be for Arabic. On that note, I'll close here. Uh, 
As always, I welcome comments from others, and uh, I'd like to thank Orthodox Moore for another thought-provoking video. I look forward to his future videos on this subject, and I'd also like to thank Professor Kirshen for taking the time to share his thoughts with Orthodox Moore. Uh, their correspondence provided an opportunity to have the sort of discussion I have attempted to put forth here. But like I said, I'll close here. On that note, God bless.